as a woman, I'm sure there's probably been at least one time in your life where you've dealt with a man who won't open up. Or maybe he just struggles to open up. Either way, it becomes a very frustrating situation. It becomes a very hurtful situation and very confusing. Not just confusing as far as not understanding what's going on with him right now, but confusing in the sense that you don't know how serious he is about you. Like, why does he seem to shut you out? Why does he seem to not let you in and open himself up to you? And the reality is that in many cases, you're dealing with a man who is not ready to be in a relationship, in a healthy relationship. However, there are also many other situations where men commonly struggle to open up about certain specific things. And I want to lay out to you how to, well, to be aware of this stuff, how to handle these specific issues, all right, and what you can do to allow a man to start opening up to you more and being able to have more healthy communication in the relationship. So in no particular order, one of the first things a man struggles to admit to a woman is that he feels neglected. Now, there's a lot for me to say about this, but I want to start with a very specific scenario within this point that I'm making. And this is the scenario where I've seen happen to a lot of couples, whether married or single, who already have kids, okay? And the woman desires to have an additional child. And she's trying to get her man or her husband, let's just go with husband for this example, to have that extra child, and he's very resistant. And what I have come across in so many situations is that the reason why the man does not want to have the additional child is not because he wouldn't enjoy a, a child with his, his woman again. It's the fact that he feels like he's already not getting attention and priority in this relationship and adding another kid knocks him further down the line. And so this does not allow a man to feel like he can allow anything else to come in this dynamic with you two because he's not getting what he needs, all right? And essentially, he is feeling neglected. And a lot of men go through this. And unfortunately, it's very difficult sometimes to admit to a woman that neglect is why you don't want to have this additional child or neglect is why you're not okay with a family member maybe moving into the household for a little while. Neglect is another reason why maybe he's now not pouring into you in certain ways. Now, that isn't to excuse his behavior. It doesn't mean it's okay for him to be tit for tat, but it's a reality of what happens. Because that neglect is, it feels like rejection to that man, all right? And it's not just rejection in the sense of the woman that I'm trying to be with or that I love is not uh, making herself available for me, not making sure I'm good, you know what I'm saying? But also, my needs are not being met. So neglect isn't simply about giving him attention, so to speak. It's also about the specific types of attention that he's looking for. So it can be emotional neglect. There could be situations where the man feels like whenever you guys talk, it's about what's going on with you, how your day was, how, what, you know, what issues you're facing. And yes, you may ask, I'm laughing because I'm already thinking about something. You, a lot of women may ask the man, how was your day? But the minute he starts telling you, you somehow flip it <laughs> back to you and what you were going through or what you saw the other day. And it's like he's not being allowed to uh, pour out emotionally or get things off his chest in a way that allows him to feel safe in that moment as well. Because if he feels like me even let's just say complaining about how my day is, is going to be met with more negativity, well, he's just not going to bother. Or if he feels like you're just going to dismiss how I feel, he's not going to bother. So yes, there's a lot of emotional neglect that happens. Of course, there's also sexual neglect, all right? I would probably argue this is, this is a huge issue. I'll just say that. This is a very big issue because, Again, for a lot of men, especially and more specifically in committed relationships or in marriage, they had a certain either expectation or hope of a level of frequency sexually, all right? 
And when that, that hope is now gone because he realizes it's not going down like that, that can cause a lot of problems. And unfortunately, neglect in a relationship, and as a woman, I'm sure you can understand this because if you have ever felt neglected, then it causes a lot of resentment, animosity, and a lot of other issues. And again, the man may in roundabout ways express that he feels neglected, but he doesn't really say it in that clear way in many cases. So he may complain about the, the lack of, of sexual fulfillment, right? But he's not really expressing how much that is also hurting him. So that's the crazy thing. The, the sexual neglect can turn into emotional hurt as well because now he feels like you don't even want him like that. You know, do you, it can cause him to question, do you even love him? You have to understand when, you know, in the book, The Five Love Languages, they said one of the most common love languages for men is physical touch. And a lot of men equate the woman's willingness to be intimate with him, with her loving him. And so when he's not receiving that, that again can be hurtful. It, it can be frustrating as well as what happens biologically to a man who's being denied uh, his needs being met, all right? There's a lot that goes into it, which I think a lot of women don't understand because in fairness, you're not wired like a man. You don't feel what he's feeling. You don't realize how big of a deal this is for him. To you, it's like, well, it's just sex for some of y'all. Not all women think like that, but some of you like, it's just sex, it's no big deal, that shouldn't be a problem, but it is, it is. So ultimately, to wrap this point up, neglect is a huge issue. It is definitely something that men feel or struggle to open up about because they feel like there's going to be a backlash or dismissal of the issue. And they also don't want to feel like they're coming off as needy at times. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you've ever made them feel that way. So be mindful of that and pay attention to the cues that are telling you there are issues in that area. And let me just say this, also, if you're watching this video, ask yourself, when I talk to him, do I ask him how his day is? Do I listen to him? Do I meet it with encouragement, positivity, love, or am I reacting negatively to it? When it comes to the sexual side, am I making sure he's good? Not by your standard, but by his standard. So you don't even have to necessarily wait for something else to happen before you just explore if this is an issue. No, ask yourself these questions now, and if those answers are not the right ones, let's start making changes. All right, so now let's get to the next thing on this list. So another thing that men struggle admitting to a woman is that he's jealous, all right? And so I would argue, listen, I think that for most individuals who have any kind of feeling, even when men don't have feelings, because I think it's important for women to understand that men can be, a lot of men, it's always a lot, it's not necessary. it's never all, but a lot of men can be very territorial, all right? So I think it's important before I continue that you understand jealousy does not equal real feelings, all right? Being territorial does not equal real feelings. I have seen plenty of men who had no serious interest in a woman, no plans to escalate the situation to a real committed relationship, still be extremely territorial and jealous, not wanting her to talk to anyone and doing everything in their power to block her from speaking to anyone. So you've got to understand that though, though, though jealousy is very common and I would say that the person who does have feelings is probably going to have moments of it depending on what may happen in a relationship or what scenarios pop up. Just understand that it itself does not equate to something real being there, all right? But getting back to the main point at hand, a man being jealous, like, no one really likes to say, yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> like, I think some people are, are cool being real about it. But most people, they feel some kind of way admitting to that. And so what you have in a lot of scenarios is people trying to act tough, act like they're, they're not bothered by it. Or worse, worse, is that out of the jealousy, rather than admitting it and confronting it, retaliating, all right? And so a lot of people, 
whether they are just dating, whether they're married, long-term committed relationship, they get jealous and now it's, I'm going to make you jealous. I, I'm going to make you feel what I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? And it's just an unhealthy behavior. It, and, and, and if you have ever found yourself doing that, please check yourself. I say that with love, but check yourself because that kind of retaliation, any kind of retaliation usually leads to an escalation of the issue to where things are going to only get worse. All right. And it becomes this never ending cycle of trying to one up each other. And, and what happens in there is that all we're doing is planting negative seeds that will now grow into something worse, if not right now, later on. So a lot of men, yes, you know, if, if they're dating you, maybe they see you out with another guy. Because again, you're dating, you're single, you're free in this example to date who you want. They may feel some kind of way. Hell, it may just be seeing you in a picture and they don't know who the guy is. <laughs> and there's a level of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different things. But guess what? The jealousy does not stop at other men. The jealousy could be going back to the example I gave in, in part in the first reason, the kids. There are men who are jealous of the kids. Because the kids seem to be getting more love and attention than him. It could be jealous of other family members because they get more respect, more love than him. It could be jealous of the friends because you seem to open up or it's kind of hitting my spirit because I've come across this before where, and this won't apply to everybody, of course, but there are some women who have male best friends, okay, and have you know, said this is a platonic, it's, it's nothing serious. But what the man in her life has seen is that you speak to this best friend in a way that you don't speak to him. You seem to have a level of comfort with the best friend that you don't have with him. And yes, granted, maybe there are some things that he is not aware of or not doing that he could do better that would help you have that with him. But regardless, he sees that. And yes, there creates jealousy. But again, People don't want to come off as insecure. They don't want to, they don't want to make it an issue. They don't want to be, feel like they're coming off as weak. And more specifically, we're talking about men. So they won't say anything, but they start to have a problem. And this is also hitting my spirit because a lot of times in these situations where people have these opposite sex friendships and you know, some people will say, well, it shouldn't be a problem. We should be allowed to have friends. And yes, I do believe we should be allowed to have friends. I do think there needs to be boundaries. I do think that some friendships seem to cross a line where it, it's doing too much, <laughs> in my opinion. All right. But I, I think that what happens is sometimes the woman is saying to the man, my friend is harmless you know, he's never made a pass at me. He doesn't see me like that. But his problem is what he sees in you towards your friend. What he is sensing and is making him uncomfortable. And for any of you who may not fully connect with that, consider the shoe being on the other foot. Where you see this, this female friend that he has. And sometimes, yes, the female friend may be respectful to you, may 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 not have caused any specific issues, but you're sensing something in him that seems to be like there's something there. And of course, it not only makes you jealous, it makes you concerned. It makes you have struggled to trust him and this situation. So bottom line is jealousy definitely creeps in a lot because again, if when we do have real feelings, it's very easy to become jealous, all right? What's popping in my head now is, and I, I hope I'm saying this correctly, I believe God at one point is referenced as a jealous God because he loves us so much, he ain't trying to see us worshiping other gods. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, It's normal when you love someone for those intense feelings to start to cross those certain lines, but we have to be mindful of not mishandling that being honest with each other, creating an environment where it's not about jealousy anymore, where we feel more secure with each other so we can have a healthy relationship. All right, so let's keep this going. Now, this third one, I should have warned y'all in the beginning. There's going to be some on this list that might throw you off, all right? And this is this might be one you weren't expecting. But I, 
I always put things on the list for a reason. There's a purpose. So let's get to it. The third thing a man struggles admitting to a woman is erectile dysfunction. All right. Now, I felt the need to make sure this was on the list because one, it's a real thing. It, it's happening and it's happening more often now than ever before. There's a lot of different reasons for it. Low testosterone and men testosterone levels are at some of their lowest, if not the lowest it's ever been in life. All right. There's a lot of other outside influences contributing to the issue. And I think it's important that we talk about it because let's start with this one a lot of women, and you may have been in this situation, you're internalizing his inability to get up in that moment, right? And you and you may start to wonder what's wrong with you. And I want you to understand that, no, a lot of men, though they may not be able to articulate to you, they have a general issue of erectile dysfunction. And some of them may not have come to terms and, and, and grasp that, that they have this issue, right? But Again, there's other things contributing to it. So one thing I will let be known is many of you are probably not aware of the fact there's something called porn-induced erectile dysfunction. So some men, especially younger generations who, who grew up on porn, right? They've gotten to a point that they've, they've basically exposed themselves to so much digital stimulation that now they struggle with real world, real woman stimulation. And there's a lot more to it. I'm not a doctor, but I want to put it out there so maybe you can look into it and be more educated about it. But it's a real issue. So there's things like porn-induced erectile dysfunction. There's also, as I said, low testosterone levels. A lot of men not taking proper care of themselves. All right. Depression. There's a lot more cases of men being depressed. And that depression leads to struggles in the bedroom as well. So even though, you know, I know sometimes I've even made jokes about it could be World War III out there. Men still want to get it on, right? But, but not every man is like that. If they're too bogged down emotionally, they can't perform in the bedroom. So again, as a woman, do not be quick to internalize it and make it about you. And, and that's part of one of the reasons why men won't want to admit it. One, they don't want you to think it's a you issue, right? But also, it's just not the easiest thing to say, I have erectile dysfunction. Now, of course, I think for every man who is struggling in that area, one, there are cures, there are ways to fix this, and I would encourage them to do so. And as a woman, if you ever come across a situation, again, it's very easy to start thinking, is something wrong with me? Don't go to that mindset. Go to, okay, well, how can we make this better? What can we do to work on this? But let me say this, because I've seen this tons of times. There are women who did handle it the correct way, tried to encourage the man, and he didn't want to do anything about it. And you, I just personally do not feel like you need to hold yourself prisoner to this relationship. And I know if it's marriage, it's a little more complicated, but hold yourself prisoner to, to a man who does not want to fix a fixable issue. All right. And you should not have to now. Now you become the one who's neglected because now you can't have your needs met. So maybe he has come to this. I don't even say peace, but acceptance of his issue to where he's like, oh, I don't care about sex anymore like that. But it's still important to you. Or if it is still important to you, then we can't just ignore that. All right. He has to be willing to go get help. But again, understand help can uh, be found, how can be done. Now, of course, listen, you, you want to make sure you're always doing your part in a relationship um, as far as how you show up to, to cultivating a proper environment for you both to be pleased in the bedroom. But again, he has to be willing to do his part. But again, bottom line is erectile dysfunction, very common nowadays, a lot more common. And, and let me say this, it's become even more common with men in their 20s or as low as in their 20s. So this is no longer just an over 50, over 40, whatever it used to be issue. Nah, younger and younger men are starting to develop this problem. So it is something that men will struggle to open up about, but be open-minded as a woman as far as what's really going on here and how things can get better. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. A man who loves you 
truly loves you, wants to make you a priority, not a convenience. He wants to pour his heart into you. He wants to be the man you can trust, you can lean on. He wants you to revere him and, and, and hold 